Hello Geographers, welcome back to Everything Geography. My name is Tapelo Tulo and in this video we're covering what we call tropical cyclones. Before we start, um, please ensure that you click um, that subscription button to subscribe and also like and share the video and also recommend to your fellow friends so we're going to cover tropical cyclones uh, and in the next slide um, this is the outline of what we will be discussing so i ensured that i ensured that um, i i have covered almost everything on this topic so after watching you can just grab your past question papers and um and try to attempt them i will also leave a link in the description button where you can find previous um question papers that you can use um, um, for your study so without waste of time let us get into it so tropical cyclones um, as we know key definitions for you to understand as we go along this topic number one you need to know when you're talking about Coriolis force you're talking about the force which deflects wind due to earth's rotation and latent heat this will be the heat that is required to change phases. This can be from a liquid to gas or from solid to liquid. And we also talk about adiabatic heating, uh, which is the process whereby, whereby air warms as its pressure increases. And then we also refer to what we know or what is known as the ITCZ, which is the inter tropical convergence zone this is the zone whereby the tropical easterlies converge or meet and this is along the the equator and these tropical easterlies will be coming from um, the northern hemisphere and um, the southern hemisphere meeting at the at the equator so please bear in mind or keep these in mind as we um, as we discuss or as we move forward so what are they tropical cyclones are basically low pressure systems which forms along the tropics um, they normally form between 5 uh, degrees and 20 degrees north uh, north and south of the hemisphere so as seen on this diagram or on this uh, representation over here in the southern hemisphere they will um, they will start over here and follow this direction or this tra uh, trajectory and in the northern hemisphere they will start over there and follow this direct uh, trajectory over there you also need to be aware of the different names that are used for these systems so in the northern uh, Northern America, or rather in America, they use um, the name hurricanes, and in Asia they use typhoons. Whereas um, in the uh, in Australia they call them willy willies, whereas we call them um, in Africa um, we call them tropical tropical cyclones. So. Um, typical characteristics of these systems or of these tropical cyclones that you need to understand for uh, when they are asked in the exam. Uh, number one, they are named alphabetically. So in a season they occur, they will be named according to um, names. For instance, Cyclone Elin. Those who have watched a video on Synoptic Weather Map, they'll know that there was a um, 
a cyclone on the map that we were using and it was named Eli, meaning the E, it is the fifth cyclone, uh, cyclone which formed in that season. So they will be named alphabetically according to their occurrences, which is A for Aaron, that will be number one, B for um, whatever name they may choose, but but norm normally they will use female names. Um, the second characteristic is that um, they occur in the late summer and early autumn along the tropical oceans. So when you talk about tropical oceans, we're talking about your Tropic of Cancer and your Tropic of Capricorn. So these are your Tropic of Cancer is uh, in the northern hemisphere, whereas your Tropic of Capricorn is uh, right at the southern hemisphere. So these these systems they form along the tropics, and the uh, the temperature of the water must be at least above twenty five degrees. So we all know that at the equator, um, the temperatures are high. So from about zero degrees to about 30, uh, rather um, 15 degrees to 20 degrees, you have warm uh, temperatures or um, heat is more higher, I would say, uh, when it comes to um, your heating of the, of the, um, of the atmosphere. So... They require the uh, what we call, as we mentioned, the Coriolis force for their formation, and this Coriolis force is zero at five degrees, meaning from zero degrees to five degrees, um, your Coriolis force um, is zero. Meaning these systems they will form right above five degrees and upwards, and then. They travel westwards, meaning they will travel in this direction. They will travel in um, in this direction as shown here. As you see uh, the trajectory over here, meaning they will travel from east to, to west, east to west, east to west. Um... And they, they travel with a speed of about 40 to 200 kilometers per day. And in the southern hemisphere, they rotate clockwise. And in the northern hemisphere, they will rotate anti-clockwise. Anti Their source, or they source rather energy from large amount of latent heat. So as we mentioned, latent heat is the amount of energy, um, the amount of heat needed to, um, amount of energy needed or heat required to change a phase, right? So they require this uh, latent heat for them to, to generate. And last but not least, um, they are associated with heavy storms or rather heavy rains. St uh, storm surges and very high winds and they they mostly affect eastern side of the continent at tropical latitudes so as you can see over here or in this representation where they form um, they normally hit the eastern side of the of the continent as you can see here at Madagascar they will hit this eastern side of Madagascar, um, Madagascar, and also um, the Mozambique over here. Whereas at the northern hemisphere, they will start just over there and hit parts of um, America at the eastern side as well. Also here in Australia. So those are the characteristics or oh, you also need to note of um, the direction or rather the trajectory so they form normally we said between the 5 and 20 
um, decrease and upon forming or upon traveling they will be forced to to cave due to what due to the Coriolis force so these um, these systems as they form they will be forced to cave and we as Afri uh, South Africa we are lucky because uh, as they are about to hit our country they are being stopped or they dissipate in Madagascar and in Mozambique if they pass Madagascar before they can come to our country so when it reaches South Africa sometimes it doesn't reach because it has no more power and we'll discuss this uh, as we go forward so please mind of the characteristics they will ask them in the next exam in your exam you need to know them so we also talk about factors which are needed for tropical cyclones to form so these are the conditions that are needed to fully develop a full system of um, tropical cyclone so i have the number one the ocean temperatures must be above 27 degrees celsius so we mentioned in the beginning that the um the temperatures of the ocean must be at, at minimum 25 degrees so for this system to fully develop it needs temperatures that are above 27 degrees celsius like i mentioned that in the equator um, it is very hot so that's why um, these low pressure systems tend to fall and this is because or uh, rather this um, temperatures make it possible for convection uh, to take place so when you talk about convection we're talking about um, a scenario whereby your cold air descends and your warm air rises or ascends to the atmosphere and this is necessary for um, the eye the eye to fully develop whereby your cold air descends and your warm air rises meaning as the cold air descends to the ground or rather to the surface of the ocean it forces um, warm air to to rise and you will see uh, as we go forward and also there must be less friction for this system to fully develop and um, the water must be or rather the water vapor uh, in the tropical um, uh, in the tropical zones which is here along the equator um, is more so it says there are more water vapor in the tropical maritime atmosphere so due to the mo moist air these systems um, are able to to form as we mentioned there that it requires unstable air so your unstable air remember is what is your your warm air and this warm air makes it possible for convection as i explained what convection is uh, they also require a very low pressure and a steep pressure gradient we talked about pressure gradient in my previous video please if you haven't watched it please go watch it so that you understand uh, what we uh, when we talk about gradi uh, pressure gradient what do we mean and this pressure gradient or rather this um, characteristic over here or rather this point over here helps the air to to rise and the steep pressure gradient um, it is necessary for Coriolis force and therefore the rotation of the system remember these systems are large and they rotate so the pressure gradient and the Coriolis force um, causes the rotation of what of this system you will learn later what they look like and last but not least your uh, this system needs an undisturbed period period of several days meaning um within 
these several days, all these conditions must be met for us to have a fully developed uh, tropical cyclone. Moving forward. So next we discuss the stages of development of these systems or of tropical cyclones. So we have four formative uh, uh, form, uh, I mean stages rather. We have four stages of development that you need to understand and be able to describe fully for your exam purposes. So the first stage and these stages are rather simple to um to understand and also you need to be able to draw different um different um what's this different diagrams representing each stage so the first one we have what we call the formative stage so at the formative stage this is whereby your low pressure just formed um, on the on the ocean and it hasn't yet developed into a system or into a tropical cyclone now point number one there the pressure is above um, 1000 hectopascals but it starts to drop as time goes by so this is the re typical representation of what it looks like and there's stroke a uh, strong up, uh, upwards movement of air which intensifies the low pressure meaning what we uh, what I described here um, as convection convection so meaning the strong upwards movement of air which intensify, uh, uh, in intensifies the low pressure is what we call convection meaning now your warm moist air is forced to rise to the atmosphere and as it rises um, it uh, intensifies this low pressure and the cyclone uh, is not yet large and with no visible eye so you still have your typical um, low pressure um, with no visible eye and then but your winds are at gale force what do we mean by gale force we mean we mean that um your winds are starting to be strong and at some point or rather in this quadrant of the system you 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 starting to have the spiral of what um of wind movement So as you can see in these two representations I have put here, um, the uh, the pressure is right above one thousand, which shows that it hasn't uh, fully developed into a tropical cyclone. Meaning we still have your typical low low pressure, and then the second stage is what we call, or uh, is it is called the developing stage so at the developing stage this is whereby now as it says the it develops the cyclone starts to develop um, the pressure now is dropped below 1000 hectopascals so as you can see in this right hand uh, representation or diagram your pressure is just below we have 992 hectopascals meaning your pressure has just dropped below 1000 and the eye is fully developed and air pressure continues to drop so as you can see here so for us to be able to locate or to see this is a tropical cyclone starting or developing now we have a fully eye this symbol that is an s shape which is um an s shape like uh we know that it represents the the eye so strong pressure gradient and winds uh, and wind speeds 
are at hurricane strength, meaning your wind uh, wind speeds have now reached the hurricane strength, meaning we have strong um, wind speeds. So this quadrant over here, which is the third quadrant of the system, um, is the most destructive. And as you can see at the developing stage, it is now starting to be um, to be bigger or larger in size as compared to this uh, the formative stage. And then at number three, we have what we call the mature stage. Now, when you talk about mature stage, this is now whereby your um, your system has now fully developed, right? So your pressure is now steady and um, it is below um, um, 1,000, as we mentioned, hectopascals, or it, it is between 900 and or to 940 hectopascals in the eye. And your weather and winds are destructive in the worst weather pattern. So in the eye, the eye, when we describe the eye, the eye is the the calmest uh, 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 portion or the calmest part of the system whereby um, the pressure is steady, there's no um, high winds or there's no um, 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 very strong winds and your pressure gradient is below or rather is steady and then the weather uh, the weather is, is, is fairly hot. You will see when we describe the weather conditions of the eye. And then this quadrant over here, this is what we call the vortex. Um, as it says there, <clears throat> the winds are destructive. This is where you receive or rather you experience heavy rainfalls uh, and also um, destructive weather in terms of uh, your strong winds so we will have a cross section of a mature stage uh, in the upcoming slides to describe um, or to try and show you um, the conditions at this stage and lastly we have that what we call um, the dissipating or degenerating stage please be aware, be mindful of the names um as we can see per um representations your now your pressure now starts to increase so your pressure starts to rise as it show it is shown at the uh, at the diagrams and the strength or uh, the strength of winds also drops so this is due to friction so when you talk about friction um uh, the difference uh, between um, the difference between the land and the ocean is that when these uh, weather systems or these tropical cyclones are at the land, they experience more friction, and as a result, uh, as a result, the, the strength of wind drops. But when they are in the oceans or over the oceans or over the water above the water um, there's less friction and thus the uh, thus the, the 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 as a the result of strong winds meaning due to high fric uh, low friction in the water um, you will receive or you'll experience stronger winds and also um, in the dissipati uh, dissipating stage or degenerating stage, you also uh, receive or rather experience heavy rains, meaning your rain doesn't stop, uh, doesn't stop immediately, and the system is now over the land or rather on a cooler, uh, cooler water surface. So these are the conditions when this um, system is starting to dissipate please be mindful of that and this is how you will draw 
your typical dissipate uh, dissipating stage or degenerating stage. So this sums up the four stages of um, of development of tropical cyclones. Next, we discuss the weather associated with these cyclones. So we're going to talk about two scenarios. Number one, when these um, cyclones approach an area uh, and when the area is experiencing the eye. So as the, uh, as the trop tropical cyclones approach, or rather when the system approaches an area, firstly, the temperature will rise and pressure will start to fall drastically and the winds will strengthen and you will have cumulonimbus clouds approaching. So you will see these very dark clouds uh, that, uh, that will approach at a very high speed. And as you, uh, as you experience these cumulonimbus clouds, remember, these are clouds that carry with very high or heavy rainfall. So you'll experience torrential rain, and which is also associated with what? With storm sage, so your storm sage is basically your um, your rise in sea level or sea water as a result of what? As a result of um, stronger winds and high pressure. So storm sage will swamp low lying areas, and then there will also be uh, after when this uh, system have arrived. Uh, temperatures will drop because of what? Because of rain. So as it passes an area, you will also experience the eye. And in the eye, like I mentioned in the previous slide, that the eye is very calm. So in the eye, the temperature will slightly increase because of the sunshine. And there will also be a drop in winds, meaning stronger winds will will, uh, will stop or will decrease. And your pressure will be at lowest. Sorry about that. Your pressure will be at, at lowest. As I mentioned, that you will also receive uh, experience sunshine. So the eye is associated with calm conditions, which last for about an hour or two. So let's look at the cross section of a mature um, tropical cyclone when we talk about this system. So as this system is moving in this direction, this is the mature tropical cyclone. So when you cyclone, when you are asked in the exam, in the exam to draw um a cross section of a mature tropical cyclone, we need to see something of this nature or this nature. So, as you can see, it is moving in the, uh, uh, towards your right. And before, as we mentioned, the pressure would be higher, the temperature would be higher, and there will be less clouds um, when this, this, um, uh, this system is approaching, meaning it is about um, probably 25 kilometers away. But as it approaches, you're now going to experience what we call, or what I've mentioned, that it's the vortex. So in the vortex, you have dense clouds. This is whereby you find your cumulonimbus clouds, as you can see over here, which were... Uh, and it is also associated with strong winds or very violent uh, wind. And remember, these cumulonimbus clouds carry with sun, uh, thunderstorms and tor torrential rain. But as you approach, remember, this system is now um, um, in size. It's about uh, 200 kilometers to... Uh, 500 kilometers in diameter so from here to here could be uh, probably 500 kilometers so 
for when when you experience the eye as we as we mentioned that you can experience calm conditions of the eye for about an hour or two so in the eye you have a very low pressure you have a very low pressure and clear skies this is very important you have very clear clear weather or rather very low uh, pressure and clear skies and with warmer temperatures meaning the eye is calm uh, with these conditions so one of the things that causes uh, the calmness in the eye is the, conve the, the convection which I described in the previous slide because you have this cold air uh, descending whereby it forces warm air to, to rise as a result you have um, you have uh, you have clear skies because when this warm air is forced to rise this is where we buy you have your convection of what mm. of of a so this is these are the conditions in the eye that you need to know so very low pressure to sum it up you have very low pressure in the eye clear skies and warmer temperatures meaning the eye is very is very calm and then as it passes after an hour or two you will you experience another vortex which is similar to what we have discussed so on this representation here this is how it looks like on your satellite so this is the typical representation of um of a mature tropical cyclone when it's seen um, from a satellite as you can see over there that opening over there is your is the eye and this is um, the spiral or rather the spiral of the of the cyclone and as we said in the northern hemisphere it will rotate anti-clockwise so this picture was taken from a, a northern hemisphere um, where the chart so recognizing tropical cyclones uh, on a synoptic weather map so you need to be able when you are given a weather chart like this you need to be able to tell us or to notice these uh, systems on the map so number one you'll see closed isobars as you can see over here they are very closed um, this is one of the conditions number two the eye symbol as I've mentioned that is like a symbol over there represent the the eye and it also have a name closer to or rather uh, written in the system so as we can see it says here Funso so this cyclone was called Funso and Last but not least, you'll have the date indicating late summer or early autumn. So I removed, um, I rather cropped out the, the date for this map. So it was around 22 January, which is late, late summer. So those are the conditions that you need to, or rather the um, characteristics for you to see um, to indicate or rather to claim this is a tropical cyclone but mostly most importantly is the name and um, the eye over there please don't forget those and we move forward so um, you will also be asked in an exam um, which is most likely the questions that that are asked frequently the impact of tropical cyclones on human humans and the environment so we know these storms or rather these systems come with heavy rains and as a result um, these rains um, causes flooding and we also talked about the storm surge and also um, the storm surge and also uh, uh, strong winds right so when these storms or these tropical cyclones or these systems 
heat the environment or come into land um, normally it causes deaths uh, of humans and animals um, a lot of people die because of flooding and uh, due to flooding and as they um, as they drown most of them drown because of these um, weather systems and two it causes damage to infrastructure this is where by now winds are pulling or rather winds are are destructing uh, the infrastructure and as a result remember these are very strong winds so uh, your 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 land poles or rather your um land lines are rather disturbed and they cause um they cause rather a, 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 a what do we call a destruction of infrastructure whereby your roads now are damaged and your buildings also are also damaged especially in less developed countries so i've mentioned over there that in developed world in developed worlds the damage is mainly monetary right meaning uh, uh, these areas or rather developed countries they suffer more uh, um, they suffer more in in, 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 in in money meaning they have when these storms damage the area they uh, they have to pay more money to um, to to fix whatever that is um, what is destroyed whereas in less developed countries they suffer more life more uh, loss of life because of um, these weather systems and less monetary damage meaning they spend less on 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 they they rather lose more life than money i would say so these are some of the impacts that um that these tropical cyclones or this weather system cause so you need to be able to give different um, impact there are a lot of them i just did a summary of them over here so in the exam please go into the exam knowing um, most um, impacts on people and the environment because normally essays are asked in these um in the uh, about this impact and lastly we talk about um, the strategies to help prepare and manage the effects so we all we cannot stop uh we cannot stop these uh, again cyclones uh, from forming but rather we can prepare and manage the effects of these cyclones when they hit the land number one uh, we give early warnings by the local weather office meaning um, as the scientist or rather the meteorologist indicate or rather see the formation of these um, weather systems they can give they can be able to predict uh, the trajectory of this weather system and inform the places whereby this system will hit um, as an early warning and as a result of that evacuations can be made to put places people in places whereby they will be safe and also put we can also put um, emergency services ready uh, to be able to deal with the damages and everything that it's needed to help manage the effect and then lastly for flooding management, remember as we said that these storms are associated with heavy rains. So we can put sandbags in the um, in the in the yard to help prevent or rather to rather um, to manage the flooding in our yards. So these are some of the strategies that can um, be implemented. So they are not limited to these ones you also need to know um more because they can they can also form part of your 
examination. So this forms part of the end of this lesson. Please ensure that you subscribe, share, and like, and also recommend until next time.